Okay. Um, my presentation has two goals. Uh, the first is a short presentation of two Polish women writers traveling in Europe during interwar period. And the second purpose is to outline research problems related to reconstructions of travel routes and women networks or networks or networks. Since I have only uh, recently joined the C plus network, I'm aware that I may be repeating some issues, but we have so many guests that I think that it won't be a problem. Um, issues that you have are already discussed. Um, I also will refer to our experience in working on the, the database of reception of women writers in the Europe European Coast project. So here is a plan of my presentation. Um, I was really impressed uh, by Katia's travel map of Slovenian women writers. Uh, I listened to Alenka's and Nadiezda's uh, lectures on uh, the mobility of women writers. And I wondered how to research on women writers and travelers from Poland. Um, I have chosen um, comparative approach uh, uh, exactly as you did. Uh, and it of course opened few questions. The sample is very small, two female writers, but different, very different writers. Zofia Naukowska and Kazimiera Iwakowiczówna. Um, for her uh, friends from abroad, she was just called Illa. So it's very easy to remember her name, in fact. Um, um, they were, of course, writing in the same language and they were both Polish. I'm familiar with the work, uh, uh, with the work of both of them uh, from my research, but I have never explored their uh, travel activity and I never checked the traces of travel in their work. So I did something new for, for myself. Uh, all I wanted to do uh, was uh, uh, to copy Katia. <laughs> I wanted to map their travels around Europe uh, using uh, all possible sources in Polish, from archives to diaries to newspapers. I also wanted to see if they could be set to form an international network of women writers or intellectuals. Um, their lives spent two world wars, two revolutions and three political systems. Both were born as the citizens of Russian empire and both died in socialist Poland. But their great, greatest writing and professional activity took place between two world wars. So I will focus only on this short interwar period, a period of uh, two decades of Poland independence between 1918 and 1938. It was a time when both of them were considered important and excellent writers. Both were celebrated, acclaimed, granted, well-known and popular in Poland, of course. Uh, but uh, they had different publicity and different readers. Naukowska was a novelist, a prose writer, a diarist and a drama writer. Uh, Iwa Kowiczówna was a poet and translator and differences in the literary genres uh, they practiced um, are uh, relevant uh, both for uh, national and international audience, especially because uh, Naukowska's uh, dramas were translated into Croatian and uh, were staged in Yugoslavia. And uh, Iwa Kovitovna didn't find um, good translators of her poetry during interwar period. So she was known as a poet, 
um, but a poet who is uh, untranslatable, let's say. Um, those differences in literary genres uh, were not as important as their political, philosophical, and ideological inclinations. Naukowska was a daughter of socialist thinkers and uh, geographers. And during her life, she gained her philosophical, ideological independence from any doctrine. She is right now considered one of the pioneers of feminist ethics of care and even post anthropocentric uh, sensitivity toward animal suffering. Her philosophy uh, let her. Uh, became distant from any form of aggressive nationalism, institutionalization of religion and colonial practices of Polish government regarding Eastern borders. Um, her work uh, has focused on the issue of the boundary. It is also a title of her uh, novel uh, translated into English a few years ago by Ursula Phillips. Illa worldview mm, was, on the contrary, mm, a combination of deep engagement in the socialist politics of Józef Piłsudski, uh, conservative uh, Catholic ethics, and romantic patriotism. But in this mixture was not unusual. In fact, it was very typical for Polish intelligentsia. Uh, during uh, World War I, she wrote one of the last Polish uh, Turtean poems dedicated to, to Piłsudski, and at the same time she was a nurse assistant in the Russian army. In 1918, she started to work as a civil servant in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, when Piłsudski returned to power in 1926, she became his secretary. So the life uh, paths of those two women were different. Naukowska devoted herself to literature. Uh, writing were her, was her uh, existential um, project, a form of engagement in the world um, and intellectual contribution to the change of the world. In addition, she was actively involved in the establishment and activities of literary institutions in independent Poland. Ila, on the contrary, presented herself as a civil servant, not a poet. Uh, she rejected an invitation to the prestigious Polish Academy of uh, Art, of Art or, or of Sciences, I don't know how to translate it. Um, in which uh, Naukowska was one of the most prominent uh, in, and important figures. And she didn't her, uh, see herself as a professional writer. She lived on the uh, sidelines of literary institutions. Naukowska, on the contrary, was involved member of International Pen Club and Polish uh, Professional Writers Union. Uh, the distinction between professional writer and professional civil servant is important. Uh, Naukowska was the first woman in Polish Academy of Art, while Iwa was a first woman advisor in Polish ministries. Naukowska devoted her life to writing and Illa devoted her life to serving a country. She wrote her poems after hours and she wrote a lot. <laughs> really a lot, not only personal autobiographical poetry, but also uh, occasional verses, um, which uh, really served as a, a replacement uh, for a political and uh, journalistic commentary. M many of them um, satirically mock any um, attempt to weaken Piłsudski's power. Uh, on the contrary, Harry Naukowska, in her novel, depicts power relations in re-emerged Poland with an irony towards people who fight it for independence with big ideas of freedom, equality, and brotherhood, 
Yet, when they became powerful, their political decisions turned into denial of their main ideas. Mm. Naukowska and uh, Iwakowiczówna knew each other. They read each other, but they were never close friends because of the ideological differences. But still, they are two prominent new women who created two different models, modes of um, even patterns of a first wave of feminism in Poland. Both of them were educated, multilingual, and financially independent. Illa remained a single woman for all her life. Naukowska married twice, and her, um, but, but her relationships ended unhappily. Um, they belonged to circles of prominent intellectuals, artists, and ruling elite. Uh, both were somehow privileged because of their education and exceptional status. But at the same time, uh, they struggled with misogyny and with financial issues, as radicalously it sounds when we see their photos. They look like rich upper class women with hearts, fur, smiles on their face, faces. No, on, the, on those photos, they don't smile. But, uh, but it was a paradox of their lives um, between the wars. They had to adapt to increasingly demanding social expectations for a successful woman. They had to be as elegant and stylish as they were, uh, as were wives of wealthy landowners and politicians, women who didn't work because they, their husbands earned a lot. In fact, their financial situation was difficult and unstable. Even when Naukowska was married, her husband didn't support her, uh, didn't support her financially. She lived with her mother or her life with the big debts. Uh, she had to um, earn her living as a writer. Uh, so she was dependent on publishers and editors of literary magazines and newspapers. Illa, on the other hand, treated her poetry and uh, writing as a hobby, but she wouldn't afford for uh, her living otherwise. Not a single person could live from a poetry in Pol Poland um, uh, in the period, or it's the same right now. Um, and at the work, um, in her work at the ministry, she was discriminated because of her gender. For about 10 years, she was hired as a temporary worker and she didn't get uh, financial and pre prestigious privileges her colleagues did. Uh, we may say that, that she reached a glass ceiling in her career um, and even by becoming a secretary to the marshal, she essentially experienced a demotion. She had previously held an independent position and now she was only personal secretary of someone. And, but at uh, the same time, she became a, a recognized and well-known person. So it, I just want to stress that both Illa and Nauka lived quite modest lives, despite appearances of a wealthy condition. And I think that all, all that I said is quite important to understand uh, their travels and their travel writing. So now I uh, concern on the sources. We know a lot about them from multiple sources, uh, about them as writers and, and about their travels, uh, reportages, letters, poems, and uh, diary uh, entries, uh, and even interviews. Now, Kowska, all her life, kept her diary, and almost all we know about her travels is based on her diary entries. 
Iwa didn't keep a diary. She published memoirs in the li less li late 60s, uh, where she mentioned a few journeys, but uh, uh, we don't have any access to private internet narrative about her travels. In her archive, uh, there are detailed and secret reports um, from her travels written on demand for a ministry. And uh, it's very interesting because they survived the Second World War by chance. Uh, what is more and maybe the most important, both of them, Nalka and Iwa, published short essays and uh, reportages from their trips in Poland in Polish magazines and newspapers. And Illa wrote many travel poems. And to tell you the truth, <laughs> uh, it is easier to plot uh, the route of the journey thanks to Naukowska's regular diary entries than to Iwakowiczówna's poems. Um, the uh, reportages and articles written after they return to Poland uh, in both cases make it possible to get to know the atmosphere of a journey, uh, the characteristics of the countries and their uh, inhabitants, uh, written of course for the Polish audience and for special purposes, uh, partly for a propaganda of course, to encourage people to travel. The most difficult material to work with are travel poems, arranged in a cycle that uh, doesn't, reflect, um, doesn't reflect the root of the journey at all. But it, it, it is a super-added uh, composition. Uh, I checked Illa's cycle of poems about a journey through Czechoslovakia with a railway map from the period. And it, it is, of course, not a great discovery that literature and autobiographical experience uh, are in incompatible, but it is worth pointing out that relying on a poetry as a source of knowledge about travel can result in failure. Uh, or it was a very crazy uh, route. Reports written by uh, written for superiors by Ilwa are the most reliable source of information. This is of course a very unusual and very rare writing genre practiced by female and also male poets, of course. Uh, I'm uh, dealing with an exception, uh, which is a historical source and of course is very valuable. However, uh, because it is only a surviving fragment of a larger collection, it provides detailed but selective information. Um, the material that would help to create a map of the writer's journeys would have to come from the countries they visited, from newspapers, articles, and the notes uh, of the people with whom they were in contact. Uh, since travel means uh, frequent changes of place and therefore of language, it would be necessary to organize an international research team for a relatively small task. So it is very problematic, I think. But at the same time, I think that it could uh, work on a barter basis. And I very much hope that the CPUS network is the place for such an exchange. Destinations and aims of travel. Most of their interwar years, Illa and Nauka spent in Warsaw and they never left Europe. None of them had made a long intercontinental trip. 
most of their travels were strongly connected to their occupation and not holidays. Because they work in different areas, the objectives and conditions of the journeys were different. Nevertheless, they have never represented only themselves. They were always part of the Polish pen club or the Polish diplomatic service. Uh, sur uh, surprisingly, they often choose the same destinations. Oh. And the purpose for, for Naukowska journeys to Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia and Greece in 1931 and 1932 was to take part in uh, international pen club meetings to celebrate the premiere of her uh, drama played in Prague and Zagreb and to establish or maintain contacts with intellectuals. Her, journeys were, was fun, uh, her journey was funded by uh, numerous institutions. Uh, she didn't travel by herself. She was a part of a, a representation group. Uh, here we see a photograph uh, taken at the Belgrade Railway, railway Station. Uh, we can see a group of Polish women uh, writers and journalists uh, on, their way, uh, on their way to Greece. Uh, and um, unfortunately, Naukowska didn't write any word about Belgrade, but it was a stop on their way, uh, on their way to Athens, uh, where they met with uh, delegates from uh, women magazines and International uh, Federation of University Women. Uh, the purpose for ILLA journeys to Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Romania and Hungary in 1936 was to give multiple propaganda speeches on Marshal Piłsudski. She traveled alone and with diplomatic passport. Her journey was funded by Ministry of Foreign Affairs and she had to report every single day and every single conversation that could be important for her political goal. And the goal was to improve the image of Pusowski in Europe. Iwa, Iwa gave her speeches in embassies and multiple um, organizations of Polish and Romanian, Hungarian, etc. friendship. But she also established uh, contacts with International Federation of University Women and other women organizations. She was a very attractive speaker, both for Polish governments and for guesting countries, because of her double role as a diplomat and as a poet. She was also a special guest on cultural meetings with Polish diaspora. By the way, I think that um, a deep and uh, reliable investigation of the network that the International Federation of University Women really was, is a task uh, for, for a major European grant. Uh, the role of this organization is still um, underestimated and uh, undervalued. But I think this is a very big challenge to do, uh, but worth doing it. Back to the main topic, um, different conditions and different aims of travel imprint Naukowska and Illa travel writings. Uh, Naukowska writes from the perspective of a cosmopolitan intellectual who at times feels provincial, but at the same time enjoys international contacts with people of similar sensitivity and horizons. She also reaches her dreams, international career as a drama writer and has a hope for more. Uh, she's waiting for her novels to be translated. Uh, moreover, her travels are good occasions to flirts and romances. Uh, the longest stayed in Paris, a few months in 1933 was a result of a romance with a, with a Croatian writer, Miroslav Kleja. 
uh, we can read about it, about it in her journals and in the journal of her translator, Yuri Beneshitz. I just want to show this extraordinary book, Eight Years in a Warsaw, a great um, a diary uh, of someone who observes um, uh, Polish lifestyle from a very ironic perspective. In her open letters and reportages to newspapers, Naukowska writes about people she meets uh, and sensual, very small details that both differ and connect cultures and societies. But she hardly ever mentions names and surnames. Uh, spending a lot of time in trains and, and on boats, uh, Naukowska considers the notion of the boundary. Boundaries slow down journey and make each passenger an object of uh, investigation, a potential enemy. Uh, every border reminds us of, uh, of the difference between friend and foe and about limits of hospitality and a role of suspicion and pre prejudices. Boundaries divide and limit, but at the same time, they are symbols of freedom. Naukowska especially highlights it on her journey to the new North countries, Latvia and Estonia. Illa, a representative of a Polish government, a diplomat and a poet, always limits herself in her writings. Uh, she was controlled, but she also censored herself. But what she uh, gives in her uh, reportages, letters and poems is a detailed uh, description of travel experience of a sensual woman who uh, has almost no time for observations, uh, who has no time to um, to get to understand other cultures and contemplate landscapes. Um, working in her archive allowed me to understand why her travel poems are so condensed. Traveling by train uh, between one destination and another, uh, she was tasked to, uh, with writing the, those secret reports for her superiors. Uh, paradoxically, this made her uh, travel poems uh, auto autobiographical and uh, independent, uh, totally independent from tradition of travel writing. She depicts herself as a single woman during exhausting journey with, in uh, unconvenient vagans uh, and uh, in hospitable hotels overwhelmed by work responsibilities and restricted uh, to diplomatic protocol, which meant changing costumes six times a day. You can see the photograph from her journey. All men wear the same type of coat, according to diplomatic protocol. There was no protocol for women diplomats, so they had to keep to tradition of of upper classes representative fashion. It changed every two hours or three. While Naukowska wrote about old, well-worn shoes and dresses on her journey, Inla wrote about heavy luggage, time-consuming and stressful redressing on every single meeting. Maybe this is why uh, in June 1939, she passed a driving test and was ready to ride a car. Conclusions. A few words on networks and a few words on travel routes. Um, while working on this task, I realized that I had to give up thinking about uh, a network as a conscious project or as an existential project. The network has to be reconstructed both from mentions, 
from hints, from cramps, much more often than from uh, abundant correspondence or explicit declarations. Uh, I understand the network uh, differently that we uh, do today, especially working at universities and creating networks of collaborations. I don't hear Tina anymore. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, neither do I. I will call her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe she didn't realize she she is not all heard yeah, anymore. Lucy, nie nie słyszymy cię w ogóle. Oh. Aha, czyli, yy, yy, czyli czekasz jeszcze, tak? To mamy poczekać, tak? Chwileczkę. Dobrze, dobrze. Dobrze, dobrze. No na razie, pa. Uh, it's It is a thunderstorm in Poznań now. I'm in Wrocław, so it's not my story. And uh, uh, Lucina doesn't have an electricity in her building. So no internet. And <laughs> she suggests us to uh, wait for five minutes, maybe, because maybe it's just uh, uh, very, very temporary. Yes, so she, they will. Yeah, we had the thunderstorm uh, last night in Rotswell. <laughs> Yes, this unpredictable weather makes uh, really tricky uh, all our activities. <laughs> yeah. so, Maybe we uh, should pause recording for for a while. But I, I also always cut, you know, I edit all the recordings. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Because I do it, but I will stop, of course. Uh, in her uh, reports, Iwakovichovna wrote only about matters useful for the ministry's perspective. We find no trace of efforts to, uh, to popularize her poetry or to seek translators. Since she ended up in the Transylvanian city of Cluj after emigrating in September 1939, and she stayed uh, there for eight years, she set in motion quite a few pre-war contacts with Romanians and Hungarians. Uh, and uh, uh, many small memorabilia of these um, friendships have survived. Letters which she exchanged with some of them after her return to Poland. So paradoxically, in the case of Illa, her travels as a, a ministerial employee due to her war brought about uh, unpredictable and long-lasting relationships. Um, I talked about two writers, but there were a lot of traveling mm -hmm. women from Poland who wrote uh, essays uh, in the interwar period. For example, Nalkowska's Companions on the journey through Yugoslavia to Greece published also their travel writings. Nalkowska only mentions Denka Markowicz in her reportage, but her companion, Stefania podholska Okołów wrote a whole article in the same issue of the magazine, Blushed, about the work of Stenka Markovic. So analyzing the international contacts, mm -hmm. um, we can see a micro network of a Polish female collaborators who shared the work of their travel fundators. Of course, magazines were fundators of their travels. Um, I think that the subject is very vast and it seems to me that just focusing on the interwar period is enough to write a major book on requiring um, considerable effort. Mm -hmm. And last to um, uh, 
words about travel routes. Um, detailed travel routes of female writers, it is not an easy task. And their literary output is not enough. On the contrary, it is um, it is this that is most misleading. In order to reconstruct the roots, as in order to reconstruct the networks, we need to study the sources in journals, archives, and life writings uh, of all the country visited. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, uh, this requires some effort, but I think it is still possible. The purpose of the research I have just uh, outlined would be to create two maps. First would be the most likely and documented map of travel, meetings, works, leisure. It could be shown as a geographical or political map of the period. The second map would be a map of uh, acquaintances people who came into contact with each other. Such a map of, would have to make visible the level of intensity uh, of the relationship, uh, its mm -hmm. dynamic unfolding in time and space. It would be worth taking into account um, the mobility and activity of all the elements of the network. So it would be, of course, a uh, this descriptive map, a map, a trigger for stories and histories of international literature written by women. Thank you. Thank you, Lucina. This is so interesting. Uh, I, I liked so much this photo with uh, women writers, and I, I remember that um, a colleague, um, Nadia, knows him, um, uh, Yudmil, uh, show some... Um, some years ago, uh, a, a short uh, video, actually it was a kind of a movie, but uh, he just showed a part of it, when uh, a train uh, comes to the uh, train, uh, train sta railway station in Ljubljana and Bagariana comes and then they give, they give her flowers. And I think it is not just Bagariana, also other women writers from Bulgaria. So it somehow, it is so related to this, uh, <laughs> so interesting. It was so interesting for me to see now this photo and then remember this um, movie, part from the movie. Um, it really is so connected. <laughs> I mean, it's really these networks are, are great. And then I remember at I went for this book and you probably don't see it, but this is a book that was published um, due to the Pen, um, Pen Club Congress in Dubrovnik. And this is a translation by a Slovenian uh, poet who translated uh, women writers from Yugoslavia. So um, many from of them, this one comes Her name was Lili Novi. Uh -huh. Um, so they were so connected. I mean, this 30s were so interesting period in um, in the history, especially for women. Uh, so many things happened uh, in this time, and then it was so br brutal cut, I think, um, with the Second uh, World War. So I, I think that it, it would be really great to continue with networks, and this could be actually the topic of the next year, and especially then uh, how can we visualize them um, with um, digital tools. Um, of course, we have entered many of this data already in the VRE, and I hope that now when uh, it will be uh, transferred to the University of Nijmegen, where Alicia Montoya is, then now we, we will be able to, to develop it further and to add some um, functionalities, additional, and we, we have already uh, spoken about uh, letters, because I'm very, very interested in letters. Um, and letters, of course, are also a, a, a form of a network. If you 
<laughs> you know, you will find then um, these links between uh, people, not just women. Uh, when if you study the letters, the, the correspondence of one person. So um, yes, I think it is uh, a wonderful idea and really worth discussing. A conference or perhaps a summer school because we have now this possibility of organizing a summer school and then we could perhaps the the whole academic year somehow collect this um, I don't know data or whatever we call it and then we could do something um, when we are together um, on the venue of the summer school, like we did uh, in the cost trainings where we brought our material and then put it, entered it uh, in the um, database in the VRE. So um, I suggest that we discuss this. I, I plan a meeting of the CIPUS um, group. Um, I don't know, probably in September, I think we need to, we need a break now, we all need. And then we should discuss our webinars in the next academic year. And I think that they should be somehow connected to our uh, summer school. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and the, 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 the further result of this summer school can be a book as well, yes? Uh, um, in English, I suppose, because it's much better. And, we can introduce some um, uh, writers, female writers from uh, Central and uh, uh, Southeastern Europe. And uh, your project you were talking about, Katia, yes, it was also connected with uh, Western uh, authors, uh, female authors uh, from West and the, the East and, and South and, and North, yes. Uh, you mean this uh, women in Nijmegen or this project in oh, Nijmegen? Uh, this is uh, just that uh, I don't know if you know that we have have we had problems with our VRE and the Heichens Institute because they didn't want to host it anymore. Uh -huh. so oh, no. had, I don't know it. Yeah. About we had to find another host and luckily the the situation at the university of alicia has very positively changed and they were um, ready uh, to 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 accept this uh, and to host it so i think we are now coming in the new period of um, our um, collaboration on the database and I think that there will be possibilities to um, upgrade it in many ways and especially with some additional I think and from the beginning it was this idea and then unfortunately in the HERA project somehow it didn't work out that there should be this graph or this map where you could see all these um, connections and links and but if you if you go to the VRE and if you look at the graph it is not okay so this is the the this hasn't been done properly um, by 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 the staff at the Heichens. <laughs> But still, we, there are, it is still possible. We, we have entered so many data so we can um, further um, develop it. Um, so yes, yes, this is um, something that we plan. Um, we also submitted the project. We will see uh, <laughs> what will happen now uh, in the summer if we will go to the second phase and there we will also work on uh, the VRE. So it is also a project behind, but we don't know if it will be funded. <laughs> Um, can I also uh, have some um, comments on Lutina's uh, paper, Lutina's presentation? Um, first, congratulations for the nice topic, and we learned a lot, as, as usual, on this webinar.